All right. So beloved, today I'm going to continue with our series on fruit bearing, fruit bearing. And um, our year of fruitfulness, you know, will soon run out on us. Uh, we are in October. And so with this series on, on fruit bearing, we are learning, we're going to be learning, we, start, we started last week, some practical ways by which we can bear fruit in our lives. The emphasis is on the term practical ways. In this particular series, we are learning practical ways. These messages are not going to be merely you know, theoretical. They are not going to be, you know, uh, think stories. They're going to be steps. They're going to be practical ways by which we can bear fruit right away because, you know, the time is running out. Amen. And um, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can only bear fruit in 2021, but this is the year that has been designated for fruit bearing. And I, we want to make sure that we can leverage the, the opportunity to the max. So some of the questions that I'm going to be asking, I'm going to be answering are, you know, Pastor, how can I become fruitful in my life? How can I use the opportunities and the time that's available to me to bear the most fruits in my life? And that's a question I'm going to answer through the series on fruit bearing. Last week, we started this and we addressed what to do if you realize that you've not been fruitful in your life. And according to the parable that Jesus' parable that we read um, in Luke chapter 13, verses six to nine, anyone who has been living a fruitless life, a life that is devoid of fruit and desires to start bearing fruit needs to do a few things. Number one, you want to ask God for an extension of time. Somebody say extension of time. You know, another chance. Ask God for another chance. He is a God of a second chance. And ask God for another chance. Secondly, you want to open up the soil of your heart. Open up the soil of your heart by showing the Lord that you are willing for him to have his way with you. You know, show, open up the soil of your heart to the Lord. Lay down your defenses, your arguments, you know, and, and let the Lord have his way with you. You know, make your heart malleable and, and tillable, if there is anything like that, cultivable, that the Lord, the Lord can have his way with you. Break your heart up before the Lord. Amen. And, and the third thing you want to do, after asking for a second chance, after opening up before the Lord and asking him to you know, to cultivate your, your soil, you know, your heart. You want to add manure, add manure, add some fertilizer, add some, you know, um, nourishment to the soil of your heart. And the way you do that is to feed on the word of God. And I use that word intentionally, feed, feed, feed on the word of God and allow the word to enrich the soil of your heart. These are the three things that we talked about to do if you are living, if you realize that you look around you, you look into your life and you realize you are not bringing value to others. You are not bringing value to your maker in heaven. You're not bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You are not being fruitful. These are the things that you do in that situation. And by the time you realize, you know, after you've added the manure, mix up your soil with the manure and all of that, you realize that over time, you are becoming abundantly fruitful. Amen. And I declare upon your life abundant fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. So with that said, I would like us to continue exploring, you know, the, the biblical keys, biblical keys to fruit bearing. When we go through the Bible, we see many, many things that we can do to keep bearing fruit. And I'll be addressing them one by one in the coming weeks. Uh, today, I would like us to speak about the mindset of fruitfulness, the mindset of fruitfulness. So this message is 
Fruit Bearing Part 2, subtitle, The Mindset of Fruitfulness. And I want you to come with me. The first scripture that should come to mind every time we talk about mindset is um, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 5, and then I'll read verse 8 to 11, verses 8 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, and verses 8 to 11. From the New King James Version, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That was verse 5. <clears throat> verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> the key phrase over there, the key verse is verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, for every new thing that you ever want to do in life, you need a new mindset. And I want to say that again. For every new thing, for every new phase of your life, you need a new mindset to even usher you into that phase of your life and to power you through that phase of your life. If we're going to bring anything of value to our maker, to our generation, and to the people we are called to serve, that is fruitfulness right there. Fruitfulness is bringing something of value to your maker, bringing something of value to your generation, bringing something of value to the people you are called to serve. If we are going to be able to do that, we need to develop a value mindset, a mindset of fruitfulness. Amen. Jesus knew this. He, you know, in the beginning, he was occupying a royal throne in heaven, right? And he was used to giving orders and having servants, you know, angels execute his orders. That was his state before he came to the earth. But then a time came that he needed to come to the earth, not as a heavenly king. He did not come as a king. But then he came in the form of a man, if I would say a mere man, who would become hungry some of the time, thirsty some of the time, tired. He would be at some point ridiculed, rejected, ignored, to the point of being molested and to die the death of a criminal on the cross. If Jesus was going to do all this, he knew that this new assignment required a new mindset, a mindset of humility. That's why it says that uh, this, let this mind be in you. The mindset of humility was what he adopted. So that's the mindset that he adopted. Every stage of our lives will require a new mindset. And our mindset will influence what we can do and how much we can do in our lives. You know, in this particular scripture, the Bible, I mean, the Apostle Paul is talking about the mindset of humility, okay? So the, the scripture in Philippians 2 verse 5, which we just read, is not really talking about fruitfulness per se, but 
it addresses a very prince, very important principle, right? The principle of mindset, the importance of mindset. You know, that verse tells us that Jesus had a certain mindset. The scripture is saying that there is a particular way in which Jesus' mind was programmed, the, a particular way in which his mind was set. He was programmed to be humble. He knew that he needed that humility in order to have a human experience. He was programmed to be humble. He became humble. Oh, I don't know if somebody has caught that. Because he was programmed to be humble, he became humble. If we should apply the same principle to the subject of fruitfulness, you will realize that when a person who is programmed, when a person is programmed to become fruitful, they can't help it but become fruitful. Anytime you are programmed to become fruitful, you become like a, a, a programmed missile. You will hit your target irrespective of the circumstances. The circumstances can be unfavorable. Um, the, the timing can be bad. Everyone can be saying it is impossible. There can be lack and insufficiency all around you. But once the mind becomes programmed, there is no telling how much fruit you can bear. Amen. There is no telling how much fruit a person with a fruitfulness mindset can bear. Somebody say, I want this. I want this. I, I have the mind, mindset of fruitfulness. Come on, confess it to yourself wherever you are. I have the mindset of fruitfulness. The, the Holy Spirit is programming my mind to become the mindset so I can acquire the mindset of fruitfulness. That is what this message, this encouragement is about today. God has given us the mindset. If you are listening to me today, God has given you, God is giving you right now the mindset to be fruitful. Somebody said to yourself, just like Jesus, the mindset of fruitfulness resides on the inside of me. And somebody said, because of that, I am bursting forth with abundant fruits. Oh, yes, I declare right now that you will burst forth. Before the end of this year, you will burst forth with value. Everywhere you turn, there will be value. In everything that you do, value will be, will be, will be, will be, will be will radiate from you. Value will radiate from your lips. Value will radiate from your hands. Value will radiate from your mind. May value radiate from your life in the name of Jesus. There is, there is a man in the Bible called Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a regular, ordinary person like you and I. He was actually a cup bearer, a servant who serves drinks to a king in a foreign land. He was a servant in the palace or in a foreign land. But God used that servant, used him tremendously to, to rebuild a nation, to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and to restore the pride of the nation. And you may be wondering, how on earth did a cup bearer rise to become a nation builder? How on earth did a cup bearer rise up to become a nation builder? And I want us to find the answer. If um, the technical team can display the Nehemiah chapter two, verse 12. Nehemiah chapter two, verse 12 from the New King James Version. This is the answer to that question. 
Then I arose in the night. This was Nehemiah speaking. Then I arose in the night, and I and a few men with me, I and a few men with me, I and a few men with me, okay. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. So the key phrase there, which gives us the answer to the question is, what my God had put in my heart. It's a mindset right there. Your mindset is what God has embossed on your heart, engrossed in your heart. That thing which God has deposited in you, that has resided in you, that has become your norm, that has become the way you look at the world, that is your mindset. God put a vision, a mindset, a, a, a way of thinking in him. And he said, no one, no one, knew that God had put that inside on the inside of him. It was his mindset that transformed him from a cabbera into becoming a nation builder. Amen. What has God put on the inside of you? And, and, and believe it or not, he was able to rally so many people around him, you know, to get the job done. And they cooperated with him. They stood with him. They got the job done in record time, despite some major, major challenges that they went, they faced. And the reason he was so fruitful in such a short time can be found in Nehemiah chapter four, verse six. Nehemiah chapter four, verse six. It says, so we built the wall, amen. Oh, somebody is listening. And I believe that you are, you are possessing this. So we build the wall. And the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For, listen to this, the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. What mind do you have? What mind do you have, beloved? Do you have the mindset of fruitfulness? The mindset of abundance? The mindset of value, providing value? <clears throat> May God grant you the divine mindset, the supernatural mindset of fruitfulness. And I, I recently saw a few pictures. I'm gonna ask if we can have the, one of them on the screen. Not very clear, it's quite um, blurry. But I saw some pictures circulating on social media of papaya trees that are growing in all kinds of unimaginable places. You know, there are papaya trees growing on cement blocks, on rocks, on rocky grounds you know, growing on walls, you know, walls around homes, on top of the wall. I'm not talking about at the base in the soil. They grew at a place that you may think there was no soil. And I asked myself, what is making them grow to the point of bearing many, many fruits in these unsuspecting places, unassuming places? And the only answer that we can provide is that, you know, that tree, that seed, the seed that fell in those places was programmed to bear fruit. That seed had on the inside of it, the programming, the, the, pro, the divine supernatural programming to bear fruit. So wherever it fell, it is just a matter of time that seed will bear fruit. Even if it finds a thin layer of soil, a few granules of soil, that seed will begin to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. 
where you see, if you found a way, oh, I'm finding a way. I am finding a way. Amen. The seeds found a way to grow and to bear fruit despite unfavorable conditions. I need somebody to say, I am carrying the mindset of fruit. Say to yourself multiple times, I am carrying the mindset of fruitfulness. I am programmed to be fruitful. I am programmed to be fruitful. I am carrying the mindset of fruitfulness. May it be to you according to your confession in the name of Jesus. You know, say, I am bearing fruits, the fruit of love. Come on, someone say, I'm bearing the fruit of love. I am bearing the fruit of joy. I am bearing the fruit of peace. There is peace all around me. The, the, the storms are settling because I have a peaceful life. I am bearing the fruit of patience, the fruit of kindness, the fruit of goodness, the fruit of faithfulness, the fruit of gentleness, and the fruit of self-control all around me. Because God has program fruitfulness into your mind even if you try to be fruitless it is too late oh somebody catch that amen even if you mess up even if you mess up that programming will remain on the inside of you so long a seed can remain for so many years dormant the moment moisture presents itself there it goes. It starts to spring forth. So may that fruitfulness that has been programmed on the inside of you find a way to express itself in the name of Jesus. Um, the first part of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. For as you, maybe you can put your name over there. So as I, Michael, think in my heart, so I am. Beloved, what are you thinking in your heart? I just want to pause. What have you been thinking in your heart? And I want to challenge somebody today to think fruitful thoughts in your heart. Think of yourself as a solution provider. Oh my. Think of yourself as a problem solver. Think of yourself as a value producer, a creator of things that have never existed. Somebody say, I receive it. I am a creator of things that have never existed. I am a supplier of things that are of high value. Things that are in high demand. I satisfy mouths, hungry mouths, thirsty souls. Things that are appealing. I am a producer and supplier of things that are appealing and desirable. And you will see yourself becoming ushered into that role in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The word mindset refers to the way that a person's mind has been set. And, and we all often use this illustration of mortar, mortar that is flowy, that is, you know, soft, and the construction workers play around with it. They even use the phrase, they are pouring mortar. They pour the mortar. But then as, after a while, after the mortar is poured and the wind blows over it, that thing that was poured a few moments ago becomes set in place. And once it is set in place, there is no turning back. That is a mindset. The same thing that you've been playing around with, 
that has been hovering in your in your mind that has been you've been thinking about it maybe you've been hearing it you've been pondering over it meditating on it after some time it descends from your mind into your heart once it gets there and establishes residence in your heart it becomes set in place and it becomes a mindset a mindset is defined as an established set of attitudes and beliefs held by a person. The natural predisposition, your natural predisposition and the way that you are prone to think and act. Your mindset is the lens through which you view yourself and the world. The mindset of fruitfulness says, my spirit bears fruits of righteousness. When you have a mindset of fruitfulness, these are some of the things that you tell yourself. My spirit bears fruit of righteousness. My talents make way for me. I see open doors all around me. That is a person with the fruitfulness mindset. With my hands, I will plant. I will build. I will harvest day by day, step by step. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. That is a mindset of fruitfulness. It is a mindset of abundance. Hallelujah. Oh my, I'm, I'm getting blessed. And I just believe that somebody is getting blessed as well. Amen. But there is also a mindset of scarcity. There is something called a mindset of lack and scarcity. When God was taking the Israelites out of Egypt to the promised land, they, they lived all their lives in slavery in Egypt. Many, many generations of slaves. So all they knew was slavery and they had a slave mentality they had most of them almost all of them except two had the mindset of slavery and the slave mentality says i wake up in the morning i go to work for my master i get beaten some of the time i get overworked you know abused and then I receive something little, something little to come home and feed my family. That is the mindset of a slave. And whatever I receive will never be enough. The slave says, whatever I receive will never be enough. Because of that, when they were in the wilderness, and God gave them manna. God gave them an instruction. Moses, tell them not to save it overnight. Exodus 16, 19. Don't save this manna overnight because I am your provider and I will provide for you every day. They couldn't handle that instruction. Some of them, a lot of they hoarded the manna overnight. They hoarded it overnight and it got bad. It got spoiled and was smelling all around them. The slave mentality causes people to hide the little that they have. They never let go. You never plant, you never scatter. You, you are not generous. That is, you know, it causes the slave mentality, the scarcity mentality causes people to grab and grab and grab and grab. And it's never enough. It's never enough. And this morning I was asking myself, is, is it possible that some of us are still of that mindset? And is that why it shows in our giving, our generosity to the Lord. Sometimes our giving is so meager, so little, that it appears we are holding onto the little that we have. 
And that is another message for another day. Amen. But the mindset of fruitfulness says, but my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That is the mindset of fruitfulness. Today, by the power of God, we break the mindset of scarcity. We break by the authority vested in me over your lives. I declare that the mindset of limitation and scarcity and mediocre and the myopic mindset in the name of Jesus, we break it, we destroy it, we uproot it in the name of Jesus. The mindset of never enough is past and gone by the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And what do you see about yourself? I'm going to be rounding up in a minute. What do you see about your, when you when your name is mentioned or when you mention your own name, what comes to mind? What is your perception of you? What is your mindset about this guy, this awesome being that God created? What comes to mind? What is your perception of your capabilities and what you can offer your world? Do you see a borrower or do you see a lender? Do you see a victor? or a victim? Do we see a winner or a loser? I'm not asking about what is going around, what is going on around us, but what do we see in ourselves? First John chapter four, verse four says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You are of God. He who is in you is greater. So because we carry the greater one on the inside of us, we are overcomers. We are victors. We are winners and lenders in the name of Jesus. And remember, we're not talking about, like I said, current reality. We're not talking about your past history. That's another story. Currently, it may appear as if you are not bearing much fruit. It may appear as if your life as, you know, is at a standstill. It may appear as if not much is happening around you. That's what, you know, appearances are deceptive, right? That is what it may appear. But let me read to you again Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Keep your heart, your innermost part, your mind, the core of your being. That is your heart. Keep your heart. When all the fluff is taken off and all the external layers are taken off, the thing that is on the inside of you, that is your heart. Keep it with all diligence. So the moment we allow our present circumstances, our current challenges, our past history to enter into our core, into the heart, and take residence there, we remain at the mercy of our circumstances. Whatever we harbor on the inside will soon become our reality. And I pray that you harbor faith on the inside. I pray that you will harbor fruitfulness on the inside. Believe it beyond all measure of doubt. Believe and believe and believe that you are made and programmed to be fruitful. And it's just a matter of time. Fruitfulness will show on the outside for all to see, for your father in heaven to look down and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's rest. 
when we do our fruitfulness declaration, we say what? So I boldly declare, as for me, my God has made me exceedingly fruitful. Amen. Come on, somebody say, my God has made me exceedingly fruitful. And I believe that you believe it. I believe it's registered into your heart. The day I, it registers in your heart, there will be no telling how much God can do with you and how much God can do with us as a family. Somebody shout, I have the mindset of fruitfulness. And let's begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Lord, I receive the mindset of fruitfulness. I open up my heart, deposit into my mind, deposit into my soul, deposit into the core of my being, the divine programming for fruitfulness, divine programming for fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, I expel any mindset of scarcity and lack. In the name of Jesus, I will be generous because I am fruitful. In the name of Jesus, I am bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And um, it may not show right now, but it is boiling up on the inside. It is bubbling on the inside, and it will show for all to see. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.